Hi. So the purpose of this tutorial is to give you a detailed look at the intricacies of using FEMM by going through an example of a linear electromagnetic device or an electromagnet and then analyzing its results after having simulated the problem. So let's begin by going to the top menu, selecting file and new and a magnetics problem. Then let's select enter in the problem specifications from the top menu, select problem, enter in the problem type as planar, the length units centimeters and the depth one unit in this case that would apply to one centimeter. Leaving the other values as default and hitting OK. Now let's begin sketching or drawing out our electromagnet for the computer to analyze. So we make sure that the node draw node button has been selected on the top toolbar which is represented by a point or a small square. The way we place those points precisely would be by hitting the tab key and entering in coordinates. So let's place our first point at the x-coordinate of 0, tab to go to the y-coordinate and hitting 0 again and pressing enter. Now on the left we see some tools to zoom in and out and now we can enter in some more values. So let's hit tab again, enter in some more coordinates. 10 for the x, 0 for the y, and tab again, 0 for the x, 10 for the y, and tab again, 10 for the x, and 10 for the y. Now we can use the arrow keys on our keyboard on the left panel to move up or down, the zooms, zoom button to zoom in and out, and zoom into a specific region that we're interested in. Now let's draw lines in between those points. So we click the line button on the top toolbar, select one point with a left click and the next point with a left click as well. And do the similar process for the other points that we placed. So this should represent the outer region of our electromagnet. Let's place some more points by selecting the draw node button, pressing tab, and entering in some more coordinates. Now it's a good idea to have these node, nodes coordinates written down on a piece of paper beforehand to speed up the process. So x coordinate of 10, y coordinate of 9, tab again, x coordinate of 1, y coordinate of 9, tab, x coordinate of 1, y coordinate of 1, tab to enter some more values, x coordinate of 10, y coordinate of 1. And let's draw in those values. We'll draw lines between those two points by left clicking and selecting the points in which we want between which we want to draw points, between which we want to draw some lines. Now let's draw the device that the electromagnet will be attracting. So let's enter some more node points. So x 10.1, y 
typed in enter tab x 11.1 y10 tab to enter more points x 10.1 y0 tab 11.1 y0 enter let's draw in those points Now let's also draw the regions for the coil area. And because we're looking at a cross-sectional area, we won't be drawing the entire coil, just the areas that the coil would be representing in a cross-sectional or side view. So let's enter those points first. Let's say x1, y8, x2, y8, x2, y2, and x2, y. No, x1, y2. Let's draw lines between those points. So that was to draw the inside coil. Let's draw the outer coil. So that's x0, y8, x minus 1, y8, x minus 1, y2. x, 0, y, 2. And let's draw lines in between those area, those points by left clicking to select the points between which we like to draw the lines. The next point, I, item would be to define material properties for the regions that we've just drawn. So we'd go to properties in the top menu select materials but we don't actually have any materials in our material library so we go properties materials library and drag and drop air from the library materials to our model material pane we'd also select a copper awg magnet wire of 10 awg and Select M50 from the Metals Handbook DC Magnetization Groups. Click OK and X to close that panel. Now we select the green circle button from the toolbar. Left click to place a node, right click to select it, and spacebar to or the properties button underneath grid to enter its properties so we go block type and define the electromagnet area as m50 steel and leave the other values as default so it's none for in circuit and it's not in any group so it's zero similar process left click to place a node Right click to select it, spacebar to enter its properties, block type, set M50, click OK. Now for the coil area, we'll actually have to enter some circuit properties beforehand. So let's go to properties on top, select circuits, add property, call it a coil circuit set it to series and set 50 amps in that circuit and hit OK. Now let's click the green material button again, left click to place it within the coil area, right click to select it, spacebar 
to enter its properties and select 10 AWG wire for the block type and in circuit let's set that to coil circuit and enter 500 as the number of turns now for the outer coil we left click to place a node right click select it spacebar to enter its properties select 10 AWG for the block type select it in circuit as coil circuit and this time the key thing would be to enter minus 500 for the number of turns and hit OK. Now important thing is to enter in some boundary conditions and that essentially lets the computer know that this is the region that we're interested in and that is what the computer will compute the answer for. So the way we do that is first we place a draw node at a specific coordinate of x30, y0 and x minus 30 y0. Let's draw an arc between those two points. So left click the arc button on the top toolbar, left click your one point and left click your other point and select arc angle as 180. Now because we haven't defined any boundary conditions yet, let's just hit OK. Let's select those two points in another order so that we can draw the top arc. So left click to select one point, left click to select the other point, set the arc angle to 180, hit OK. Now let's go ahead and define our properties for those arcs. So we go to Properties, Boundary, Add Property, and select our boundary condition as the name. And we can leave the parameters as default, which is a valid boundary condition. So prescribed A, and all our A parameters are zero. And click OK. And OK again. So let's right click to select the arc, spacebar to go to its properties, select boundary condition with the drop down menu and hit OK. So that was for the top arc, similar process for the bottom arc, right click to select, spacebar to enter its properties and to set its correct condition. Now as we can see the electromagnet is not really centered within our region. so to actually move those values, let's go to group which is on the right of our green button and our selection box which is our dotted rectangle and draw a rectangle around our electromagnet. All our draw points turn red and then we can hit the move button on top which will open up a specific dialog and let's enter minus 5.05 for the horizontal shift and minus 5 for the vertical shift. This has centered our electromagnet within our boundary and now what we can do is save our file because if we were to try and run that simulation it would tell us that that file hasn't been saved yet. Let's go file, save, call it 
a specific name and hit enter. Now, something that we also haven't defined yet is the material properties for this air region. So if we were to hit crank again, it would tell us to run mesh generator to see which areas we haven't defined. So let's go ahead and click the yellow button. To see our mesh. Now the gray region is the region that we haven't actually defined the material properties for, while the yellow is the region where we have. So let's go to the green button, left click in the area, right click to select it, the space bar, and enter its properties as air block type and click OK. Now that we're ready to go, let's hit the crank button to crank out some results. Now we can click the glasses to take a closer look at our results. So let's zoom in to our final values. We can hit the color button at the top to actually see the flux density And what this shows us is the amount of saturation within our specific region. So if we were to click certain points, it would define the properties of those points. Now, something we might want to know is the amount of force that this electromagnet exerts on another metal. So let's select the green button to select the block, left click within that region and see that it becomes highlighted, click integrate and in the drop down menu select the fourth from the bottom force via weighted stress tensor and click OK. And for the result, we get minus 144 newtons in, for the X component, which essentially means that it's the electromagnet is attracting this metallic piece towards it by 144 newtons. So hopefully this has clarified any issues you might have had with FEMM. And good luck with your future simulations. Cheers.